Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day, amen, that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and, amen, be glad in it. Amen. We thank God, amen, for, for another day, and, uh, a day that we had never seen before. He woke us up this morning and certainly he started us on our on our way amen it's good to be in the house of the lord one more time amen 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 god is a good god and certainly he is worthy somebody say worthy he is worthy amen of our praise amen uh, i thank god amen that he has uh, blessed us uh, to come uh, one more time to share his word amen and to and to give him praise because he is he's worthy of it amen uh, there's nobody and, and i mean there's nobody like our god amen songwriter said nobody can do me like jesus amen and, and i tell you today nobody can amen and we're just grateful to be here again amen and, we want to, uh, before we get started with, with our message on today, we just want to have a word of prayer and certainly to lift up a few names, uh, names that I'm aware of, and then we'll make sure that everybody is included, amen. I uh, want to continue to lift up the Ingram family, amen, uh, Brother Maurice, his, his family, the Thomas family, Amen. In the passing of his sister. Amen. Uh, uh, continue to lift the, the Moore family, the, the Harwell family. Amen. Who lost a son on yesterday. Amen. Um, uh, we thank God. Amen. That he is a God who is able. Amen. To see us through all of our difficulties. Uh, we want to lift the name Joe Brown and pray that God will continue to strengthen him and bless him. Amen. Not only Joe Brown, but Joe Boyd. And amen. Uh, God is, is who God says that he is. Sister Mia. Amen. Sister Sylvia. Amen. We want to lift them. And, amen. And pray. Amen. That God will continue to bless them. And, and give uh, Sister Sylvia strength. And just let her know got everything under under control amen that nothing can separate us amen from his from his love uh, on the left uh, mother all of our mothers amen mother thomas mother mother Poole, mother mother powell especially mother powell uh, mother powell is, is now uh, she's uh, in a nursing home and and we want to continue to has blessed her to live to see amen a hundred she's a hundred and three and a half years old amen that's a long that's a long time amen and we know that god is able not only uh, our mothers but our leaders and all of our members here at the church at, at the church amen our church family amen we, we lift you today amen I may not know what's going on with you, but God knows. He, he knows, already knows what you're standing in need of, even before we ask. Amen. And we're, we're just grateful for all that he has done, all that he is doing. And even for that, he's, he's getting ready to do. May you bow with me. Father, we thank you. You right now, we lift your name high. You're worthy, God, of all of our praise. We, we thank you, dear Master, for who you are. You, you're God, and you're God alone. You're God all by yourself. We thank you for your Son Jesus, who you sent, that He might hung, He hung, bled, and died, that we might live. We thank you. 
And then God, when he ascended back to heaven to sit at your right hand, he did not leave us comfortless. For he sent your Holy Spirit to dwell here with us, to be our, our helper, our guide. To be what we need, God. To be power, God, down on the inside of us. Oh, we bless your name today, God. We thank you, dear Master, for what you have already done, for what you are doing, and God, for that you're, you're getting ready to do in this place. At this hour, God, as your word go forward today, bless it. Somebody need to hear from, from heaven today. God, let them know that you are still a deliverer. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory today. We give you honor. We, we give you praise. God, I ask that you would use me now as your instrument. Let me be a tool in your hand. Hide me behind the cross today. Speak to me and speak through me. Give me power from on high, God. And give me clarity of your word that I may preach it, that your people may understand it. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way right now, God. Have, have your way. Oh, I can feel you moving right now. Oh, God, I bless you right now. I bless your name, God. Oh, you've been good. You've been good and better to me than I've been to my own self. And I thank you. And I honor you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Message Bible. Amen. We'll be reading, amen, from the Message Bible. Daniel, amen, chapter, chapter 6. Beginning with verse 10, you will find these words recorded. When Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just as he had always done. His house had windows in the upstairs that opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. The conspirators, amen, came and found him praying, asking God for help. They went straight to the king and reminded him of the royal decree that he had signed. Did you not, they said, sign a decree forbidding anyone to pray to any God or man except for the next 30 days? And anyone caught 
a man doing it would be thrown into the lion's den. Absolutely, the king said, written in stone like all the laws of Medes and Persian, amen. So they answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due reward or due regard for you. O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but make his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king established may be changed. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Amen. Amen. I've read to you again, uh, Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 16. The word of God for the people of God. This story of Daniel in the lion's den has ranked, I would imagine, in the top 10 of the most familiar and beloved passage of scripture found in the Bible. Daniel was brought as a teenage captive to Babylon at the setting, the setting of this text, Daniel is nearly 90 years old. Whole lot of changes have taken place. They have changed his name. They have changed his language. They've changed his homeland. However, they could not change his heart. With all of the changes that have taken place, Daniel is the same man at 90 that he was at 19. For when we read the book of Daniel, we read, amen, that Daniel honored God. And because he honored God, God exalted Daniel, even in the midst of captivity. Daniel, Daniel chapter 6 says that King Darius had placed 120 princes over the providence of Babylon. He has made three men presidents over the, the princes, and one of the three was the prophet Daniel. Fact about it, amen, the Bible, the Bible says that he was preferred over the other two presidents. And the king had given thought to place in Daniel over all of the others, amen. In the midst of that, amen, those other princes and presidents be began to look at Daniel with eyes of envy. And they thought to try to find some fault in Daniel as it related, amen, to the kingdom. But they could not find nothing fault in Daniel as it related to the kingdom. So, so, so they decided that if we're going to find some fault in Daniel, if there is anything that we are going to be able to get after him about, it must be concerning the law of his God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are y'all praying with me? For, 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 for as obedient and as loyal as Daniel is, amen, to the king and the kingdom of Babylon, we know, amen, that he is even more loyal to the God that he serves. 
they, they, they conspire, amen, together and they come up with a plan and they go to the king and they say to the king for the next 30 days, king, we, we want you to sign a decree that no one shall pray to any other god nor man except you. And if anyone is found praying to any other god or man except you for the next 30 days, let that man be thrown into the lion's den. The king, the king, amen, he liked the sound of that, amen. It sounded pretty good to him, amen. The decree was written and the king signed it and it was put into effect. And the word says, Daniel, knowing, amen, that the decree had been signed, went into his house, went, amen, into his chamber, opened his window toward the Jerusalem kneeled down and prayed three times a day, business as usual. Daniel did this every day, the same thing at the same time. It was business as usual. Let me let me say, let me say, amen, a few things, amen, and then I'll I'll let you go here. First, let me say something about Daniel's difficulties. Daniel, Daniel, after he had been promoted by King Darius, amen, it was not long after that envy and jealousy reared the ugly heads. Yeah, yeah, envy is a terrible thing. Jealousy, my brothers and sisters, is a terrible thing, amen. Someone once said that envy is the tribute that failure pays to success. I wish I had some help in here. Most of the time, we become envious and jealous of other people because their success has a way of exposing their own failures. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But have you ever thought about it amen have you ever thought about it whenever you are jealous about what God has blessed and given to someone else literally amen what you are saying to God is that I am not satisfied with what you have done in my life Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you're telling God. But you see, amen, you need to learn how to, to grow where you have been planted, bloom, amen, where you have been placed. Do y'all have any help in here? I wish I had some help. Which I had some help in here. Amen. The plan, amen, the plan had been put into motion. The plan had been started. Not because there was a flaw in Daniel, but rather because there was a flaw in King Darius. And the flaw in King in King Darius was his his pride. I tell you something, pride is, is something else. Not only is envy a terrible thing, but, but so is pride. Pride will destroy you. What these men were saying to the king is that you need to be God for a month. Yeah, yeah, and, and the king liked the sound of that and he signed the decree. Notice, notice with me if you will that they were envious and jealous of Daniel because he had been promoted. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's going to happen to some of, some of you. Amen. On your job, you're going to get promoted to another level. You're going to be elevated. Amen. And then somebody is going to be envious and jealous of you. Keep living. Amen. They could find no fault in Daniel as it related to his, his job and his performance on the job. And they decided that if we're going to get at Daniel, amen, we must get after him concerning the law of God. Notice, notice with me, if you will, amen, the method to the madness of these men. Their problem 
problem, amen, with Daniel is a personality conflict. Yeah, yeah, a personality conflict, but they camouflaged it, amen, to make it appear on the surface to be religious. And after all these years, amen, little has changed because, amen, we have a way of spiritualizing our evil, amen, and, and, and I need you to talk back with me if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that when you get to the bottom of all the trouble in the church, 95% of the time, it grows out of a personality. Yeah, it grows out of a personality conflict. Yeah, regardless, regardless, amen, of what we're talking about on the surface, amen, when we get to the root of most difficult in the church, it comes down to I don't like her, I can't stand him, and I don't want to work with them. Oh, come on somebody. Come on somebody and talk to me. You can tell me that after 33 years, let me say 63 years, I want to set my age back. Amen. 63 years, amen, Jerusalem folk have always gotten along. Church folk is high. Amen to get such folk to get along and we supposed to be children of God and we can't even get along the problem again I say was a personality conflict but they spiritualized their evil and nobody can be church folk spiritualizing their evil that is Daniel's difficulties but let's look, let's look at Daniel's decision. Oh yeah, yeah, Daniel made a decision. Now Daniel is faced, amen, with an awful decision. He must decide whether to continue praying to his God, being faithful to his God, bowing down to his God, amen, for this, for this uh, God plan of the month. For the word says, the word says that he knows, it says it right there in the text, says that he knows that the decree has been signed. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't no secret, Daniel knew that the decree had been signed. Now Daniel could have rationalized this thing like most of us do. He could have said, well, you know, it's only 30 days. Yeah, I can go 30 days without, without praying. We're always making excuses. Somebody in here can relate, amen, to that, amen. A lot of us, amen, go 30, even 60 days without praying. I can't hardly get 20 folk on the, on the prayer line on a Wednesday night. Y'all come on and, and talk to me. So it's not hard for some folk to go 30 or 60 days without praying. Could have said, well, I don't have to pray publicly. And now he could have said, there, now there's no reason, amen, to lose all of my influence. Yeah, over this 30 day decree on prayer. Or it could have, he could have said, amen, what most church folk say, God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah, you know that, that we can dismiss anything, amen, we don't want to do by saying God knows my heart. Stand at home for no reason at all. You know I, I couldn't get there. I, I wanted to be there. You, you know God knows my, my heart. And the truth is, amen, you don't know how right you are because God do know. Yeah, he do know your heart. Yeah, 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 you can fool anybody down here some of the time. But you can't fool God, amen, none of the, none of the time. 
Daniel's decision, my brothers and sisters, is to be true to his God. For the word says that in spite of all the things he could have done, verse 10 tells us exactly what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing that the decree had been signed, he goes into his house. He goes into his chamber, open his windows toward Jerusalem, yet get down on his knees and pray three times a day as he had done, amen, before time. Yeah, yeah, now Daniel's decision tells us a few things about his prayer life. Yeah, it tells us, first of all, amen, that Daniel had, amen, a place for prayer. Yeah, 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 Daniel, Daniel had, a, had a place for prayer. He went into his house, and the word says he went into his, his chamber. He had a private place for, for prayer, and, and I want to suggest that every believer needs to have a private place. Yeah, yeah, for prayer. Every child of God needs an upper room experience, amen, that place where you can get away from everything thing and everybody and just be alone with God. Amen. Every believer need to have that, that, that private place for if you're going to do anything for God, you must first spend some time. Must first spend some time. Must first spend some time alone. Amen. With, with God. Not only not only, not only did, did Daniel have a place for prayer, but he also had a posture in his prayer. Bible says, amen, that he bowed his knees. Yeah, yeah, as a sign of humility, he, he bowed. As a sign of reverence, yeah, he bowed. As a sign of submission, he bowed. Kneeling is a begging posture. Do I have any help in here? Yeah, yeah. And when we come before God, we, 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 we all come before him as nothing more than a, a beggar. Y'all talk with me. Yeah, yeah. Now bowing is more than a position. It is a posture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I, I, wish I had some help in here. He's bowing. Uh, his bowing, amen, was symbolic of him bowing in his heart. Yeah, he had had a place for prayer. He had a posture for prayer. Finally, he had a period for prayer. The Bible said that Daniel gets down on his knees and he prays three times, three times a day. Have you, have you ever thought about it? Amen. That, that that most of us have a set time, amen, for for everything but prayer. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there's a set time for everything but prayer. You you got the set time that that you get up in the morning. The, the alarm clock is is fixed on a on a certain time. I, I wish I had some some help in here. I, I know folk they set their phones to go off, amen, when they have to clock in and when they have to clock out. I wish I had some, wish I had some help in here, amen. We, 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 we have a set time when we get up in the morning and all through the day, amen, we, we always set a time to do something, but most of us don't set a time. Uh -uh. We don't set a time to pray, to pray. You got to set a time that you can get up in the morning. The alarm clock is fixed on a certain time. You got a certain time of the day that you have your first cup of coffee. Amen. A set time of the day to even watch Empire. Oh, oh, y'all, y'all know that series called Empire. Amen. I, I mean, you won't even answer the phone. Amen. When your Empire is on, and and if you do, Amen. You hurry 
dirty person off and say, I'll call you back. Once Empire goes off, amen, Empire came on on a Wednesday night. I, I know that because our Bible study, amen, when Empire was on, amen, it got shot in here because of Empire. I wish I, wish I had some praying folk with me this morning. Amen. But it's hard. It's hard for us to set a time, my brothers and sisters, for prayer. Amen. But you see, amen, I've discovered something. I want you to get this. If you bow before God, you can stand before any man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me rewind that. If you bow, amen, before God, you can stand before any man. The Bible says that he knew, amen, that the decree had been signed, but he went on into his house, went up into his chamber, opened his window and prayed three times a day as he had done before. He continued, he continued on with the business as usual. Maybe that's God's word for somebody here, amen, this morning. You're faced with an awful situation. You find yourself in a crisis. But I want you to know, I want you to know this morning that in spite of what your doctor has told you, in spite of your, what your lawyer has said to you, in spite of how it may appear, amen, to be in your life right now, get down on your knees, amen, and tell God all about it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You need to tell God all about it, amen. Go to bed tonight, amen, and get a good night's sleep, amen, and in the morning, amen, business as usual. For I've discovered that if you pray, something is bound to happen. That's what Daniel did. He kept on praying regardless of the decree that had been signed. He kept on praying. He kept going up into his room, into his chamber, amen, and he kept opening up his window toward Jerusalem and he kept bowing down on his knees and praying to God. Oh, I, I wish I wish I had some help. Daniel knew about the decree. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Yet, yet, yet he goes into the house, he opens his windows, he gets down on his knees and he prays to his God. And the word says that all day, from morning to evening, the king tried to deliver Daniel. And that is why Daniel's, amen, didn't have, amen, contempt for the king. Now, now, now rather he had commitment to the king of kings. Yeah, 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 yeah. He realized that Darius' power was limited, but the God whom he served was able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that he could even ask a thing. So the final thing we need to look at is Daniel's deliverance. And I'm out of here. There the king tried all day to deliver Daniel and was unable to deliver him. And finally, late in the evening, Daniel was cast, amen, into the lion's den. But I want to tell you, amen, this morning that if you put your trust in the Lord, anything God brings you too. Yeah, yeah. He's got enough power to always bring you through. <laughs> I need to rewind it. Anything, amen, anything, amen, that God brings you to. <laughs> yeah, he has enough power, yeah, to bring you, to bring you through. You, 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 you never have to, to doubt in the dark what, what God has promised you, amen, in the light. Yeah, yeah, for Daniel realized, amen, that he was not trusting in the king, but he was trusting in his God. 
And the word says that, amen, when, when Darius went back to his room, amen, when he got back to his palace, that he fasted all night long. Sleep passed from him. All night he paced the floor backwards and, and forward, worried about Daniel. And early the, the next morning, all night he paced the floor, worried about Daniel. And early, I tell you again, the next morning, he went to the lion's den, a, a man, and said, Daniel, there is the God whom you serve continually able to deliver you. And I've discovered, amen, the difference, amen, between Daniel and most of us is Daniel served God continually. Yeah, but most of us serve God when we, uh, when it's comfortable or uh, convenient for us to serve him. But that's Daniel served the Lord continually. We serve him until we can't, amen, get our way anymore. We serve him as long as anything is going all right in our life. I I'm, I'm, I know I'm right about it. I, 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 I know I'm right about it this morning. But Daniel answered, my God. Yeah, yeah, my God is able. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if anybody here this morning know, amen, that the Lord, yeah, is able. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put your trust in him and, and never doubt, yeah, that the God you serve, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll bring you out. And I'm glad, I'm glad this morning, amen, that we have a God that will deliver us. For one Friday, yeah, they marched Jesus up a, up a hill called Golgotha. Mm -hmm. And on, on that hill, yeah, they, they nailed him to an old rugged cross. Yeah, they put a place to crown of thorns on, on his head. They uh, speared him in his side. Yeah, he hung his head and, and he died. But I'm glad, uh, my brothers and sisters, yeah, yeah, that he didn't stay dead. For the Bible says, hmm, I'm going to say that one more time. The Bible said, yeah, that he stayed in the grave for three long days. But early mm, Sunday morning, mm -hmm, he got up from the grave with all power in the palm of his hand. Got up with storm stopping power. Miracle working power, glorious power, wonder working power, saving power in the palm of his hand. He got up with protecting power, but most of all, he got up with delivering power. If you wait on him, yeah, he will show up. I heard Isaiah say, they, yeah, that wait on the Lord. <laughs> shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles run, not be weary, walk and not faint. Yeah, good evening, Mount Lebanon. Yeah, yeah, the Lord will, yeah, he will deliver and he'll do it. Oh yeah, he'll do it and he'll do it on time. If you be like Daniel and just be obedient and trust in the God that you serve, he will make everything all right. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Until we meet again. Amen.